Okay, people, yeah, so I shaved off my beard. It's okay. I'll grow it back someday. Some people like it, some people don't. I don't know. <clears throat> well, Happy New Year. This is the first video. I haven't made a video in a while. So, Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, I think this is, what, the third, fourth? I don't know. <laughs> I lose track of time. Um... Suffice it to say, uh, it should be an uh, interesting year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb and say uh, that uh, I probably won't do as many videos as I did uh, last year about world events. Um, not unless any, everything just gets... Uh, ridiculous well let's put it this way 10 times more ridiculous than it is I don't know you know I was thinking about all the stuff that's going down and uh, all the stuff that I saw particularly in the election year uh, and all the stuff that I just uh, heaps and heaps and heaps of negativity uh, both from the alternative media and mainstream media Propaganda, negativity, uh, half the shit they said didn't come true, uh, half the shit that uh, some people on the alternative media talked about uh, didn't really come true, didn't pan out, uh, all the fear-mongering. Really, I'm starting to think that there's a lot of fear-mongering out there, and why? Because people can make money off it. I think I'm going to start doing more uh, videos on uh, the stuff I used to do videos on, which is the uh, Native people and uh, spirituality, meditation, uh, Tai Chi, uh, Qigong, uh, martial arts. I might throw in some world events now and then, but Jesus, man, uh, it's just too freaking negative, okay? It's too negative, and uh, it doesn't really do you a whole lot of good to uh, keep uh, looking at world events day after day after day after day. It's like a fucking tape loop, okay? I mean, it just it's the same thing over and over and over again. It might be a little different, uh, you know, like in the Middle East, it might be a different city that's under siege, or it might be... A, a different uh, <laughs> uh, bad news, a different a different type of bad news uh, in in whatever ever area, like uh, you know uh, politics or whatever. You know the world situation. Uh, we know it's all fucked up. It, you know it's 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 just fucked up. Okay. Um, so what are we going to do, sit around every day and uh, with our nose to the uh, computer screen or TV or whatever and uh, go, oh, look what's happening today. Oh, man, this is really bad. Look what's happening. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's like it's scary shit to read every day. We know that uh, the, there's uh, malevolent powers that are uh, pulling strings. We know that... Um, it's not really going to get any better with politicians. I don't care who they are. Uh, we already know that uh, people are uh, dumbed down and uh, don't have a freaking clue as to what's going on. In a way, they might be better off. Okay, I always used to say, wake up, people, wake up. But in a way, I mean, man, once you wake up, it's like you wish you didn't. Okay, once you wake up to this shit, you, it's like, man, I don't even want to know this shit anymore. I don't want to follow it. I don't want to hear about it. Um, it's all meaningless bullshit. You know, I've been reading a lot, uh, getting back into reading historical stuff uh, about my favorite people uh, lately is the Apache people. And... And you talk about uh, a contrast of uh, people that uh, got their shit together or people that are warriors, which I am a warrior. 
yes i uh you know i call myself a shaman other people do too but uh and a warrior but uh Uh, it, it's, it's really interesting to see the tradition uh, with the Apache people especially um, where they came from uh, how, they, how they migrated from up north up in the northern Americas uh, cold country down through the Rockies and spread out amongst the uh, the the area of uh, New Mexico and Arizona and Texas and the different kinds of Apaches and the different kinds of bands of Apaches and uh, how what they were subjugated to uh, how how it evolved that the uh, that we had the Apache Wars okay the quote unquote the Apache Wars the wars with the Apaches um, fantastic people really uh, they were just uh, here enjoying life uh, and all of a sudden uh, they weren't some interesting things about the Apaches that uh, I think I, I found interesting is like uh, when you talk about uh, wars okay when you talk about wars uh the Apaches weren't necessarily a warring people, okay? Uh, yes, they did war, they did go to war, but uh, the, the, difference, uh, the difference is, uh, well, let's put it this way, they, they raided, okay? Uh, there was a difference between raiding, okay, and war to them. Raiding uh, wasn't necessarily, that was kind of a fun thing to do. That's how they got their goods and... Uh, women and all kinds of stuff uh, by raiding the Mexicans okay who they had a heated up uh, relationship with since day one because the Mexicans always treated them horrible the Spanish came in and uh, treated them horrible and uh, introduced them to all kinds of atrocities half the atrocities and torture that the Apaches learned or did later they learned okay and, but they did it better <laughs> okay from the Spaniards uh, the European man and then that evolved into Mexico and uh, fighting with Mexicans okay which are basically descendants of Spaniards okay interbred with Indians but anyway they raided a lot and uh, they got everything they needed by raiding like they'd get horses they'd go in and raid a corral and again they weren't necessarily out to kill people they liked taking captives they'd take children and sometimes yes they would take uh, beautiful looking uh, Mexican women hello and um, they would uh, uh, raid food store stores and uh, all kinds of things okay uh, but they weren't necessarily out to kill people okay now the part of killing and torturing people came later when uh, the Mexican put Mexicans put bounties on the, on their heads with scalps uh, so that the Comancheros and others, uh, Mexicans and whites, came in and uh, started taking their scalps, uh, men, women, and children, uh, for money. Okay, I think it was a hundred dollars for men, fifty dollars for women, and twenty-five dollars for kids. Can you believe that? But. Uh, The deal with the wars were uh, when when Apaches went to wars went to war. Okay, it was different than raiding. Raiding was kind of a fun thing, but uh, war was a revenge thing. Okay, so let's say uh, in one incident, uh, uh, they, this this town uh, tricked some people tricked uh, in collusion with a certain town tricked the. Uh, Chiricahua's into coming in and uh, talking peace and they didn't these people didn't have peace on their mind at all 
they had what they had on their mind was uh, killing them, killing the Chiricahua. So they lured them into this town and they killed 130 of them. They got them drunk because they were coming on like, oh yeah, we're all peaceful here. We want to make peace and let's celebrate our new peace treaty. And uh, so they gave them some liquor and uh, yeah, Apaches like liquor and they got pretty wasted and uh, in the morning they came in and killed them all and took their scalps, okay? White people took the Apaches scalps and brought them in for a uh, so that they could get some money and uh, uh, get some praise, okay? So when the Apaches found out about this, when they found out about this little massacre, uh, they all got together. Uh, one, one of the chiefs was uh, Mangus, Colorado, which means red sleeves, uh, and uh, a bunch of others, uh, Cuchillo Negro, which is uh, Black Knife, and uh, Geronimo, or Goyafle, and a bunch of others got together and they went in and they made a plan to go into this town. I think it was Gal Galena or Galiana. Uh, and uh, they went into that town and they took out everybody. They took out everybody in the town that had anything, any collusion. The town was basically wiped off the face of the earth. Uh, it was rendered uh, not livable, almost. I think people started living there again later. Uh, but see, that was a revenge raid. That was a revenge thing. And man, when they, you know, when you when you pissed off an Apache, um, forget it. They're going to get revenge on you, and they're, they are some of the finest spec ops type warriors of their day. Knew how to handle all kinds of weapons, got a hold of the latest weapons whenever they could. But they were very proficient with the bow and arrow and the knife. Uh, they could throw knives. They could uh, shoot. It is said that they could shoot seven arrows in the air before one ever hit the ground. Okay. Uh, they were very accurate with arrows. Uh, they could shoot uh, 10 arrows uh, in the time it took uh, somebody with uh, a musket. Okay. To reload that musket. Okay. If there was a Spaniard or something that had a musket and they were reloading it, they could shoot 10 arrows very accurately, deadly. In the time it took them to uh, use the, you know, reload the musket. And not only that, but they used chemical warfare because they dipped the, the, the arrowheads in uh, different things that would cause sickness, okay? <laughs> like dead carcasses and uh, different kind of poisons, natural poisons from plants and uh, from snakes. So if you got an Apache arrow in you, it was pretty much over, probably. Uh, depending on where it hit and how many, if it had poison on it. Did they torture people? Hell yes, they did. But let me explain to you why. Because they were tortured from the very beginning, and so uh, they had to fight fire with fire. And they became very proficient at torturing people uh, when they caught them. When they were on a revenge raid, uh, look out. You don't want to get caught by an Apache. That old thing about saving the last bullet for yourself <laughs> is pretty, pretty uh, right on, okay? And so... Uh, yeah, they got they, they were good at uh, torture, but, but let me uh, impress upon you that uh, they were fighting for their lives against a bunch of uh, sick, vicious, vile, white eyes and Mexicans that didn't give a shit about them or their families, okay, and came in and attacked these peaceful people and introduced them to their type of torture and their type of killing and their type of 
warfare, which just was outright extermination. They wanted to exterminate. Uh, their orders went out from uh, guys like uh, General Carlson, or was it Carlton? I forget. Uh, one of those names, uh, one of those two names. I think it was Carlton. Uh, orders went out that if they came across uh, Apache, uh, Apache, a group of Apaches, a village or whatever, all the men were to be killed. All the men were to be killed and the women and children taken captive. And uh, so this shows you the mindset, okay, of... Uh, of the people that uh, were moving into Apache territory or Apacheria, as it was called. Apacheria covered a lot of ground. It covered uh, western New Mexico and southern New Mexico and uh, all of Arizona mostly and uh, down south of the border, okay, south of those two states or territories. Yeah, so just a little bit about what I've been reading about as far as uh, the Apache people, and I'm gonna I'm going going to uh, be sharing more with you about true warriors, uh, the indigenous people of this land, that were going through much the same humiliation and uh, genocidal. Uh, tactics that actually we're going through today as uh, natives today and even white people, okay, even the populace. Uh, it, it, has, uh, it, has gotten to, it has gotten to the extent of uh, the whole populace is being, uh, oh, a set upon in a genocidal fashion, okay, and the world. So I'm correlating, yeah, I'm correlating a little bit here with uh, what's going on now with uh, world events, but I'm not going to get particular about it. I'm just going to say that the elite and the uh, people in charge have always been these same people that were back then trying to exterminate the Apache people. And so it continues on, okay? And unless you're a warrior today, like the Apache people were, some of my favorites being Victorio and uh, Geronimo or Goyafle, one who yawns, was his real name, and Lozen, uh, the female warrior, and Goyan, and Dateste, and Catenye, and a host of other uh, beautiful, beautiful warrior people that lived uh, in the areas where I was raised in the desert uh, southwest. And uh, as a kid, I picked up on a lot of their spiritual energy. Not my tribe. My tribe's a different tribe. But I lived amongst the Apache and amongst the Navajo and the... Uh, Papago and the Hohokam. Well, the Hohokam were pretty, pretty extinct by the time I got there. But um, just a little, uh, just a little history there, and uh, on the Apache people, and uh, you know, if you like it, I'm gonna be uh, doing more videos on it. Like I say, I'm gonna my videos are gonna uh, tend to be more less about the world events, more about the spirituality, tracking, meditation, uh, spiritual exercises, uh, states of mind to be in. Um, especially in this world we live in, it's really there's really really a lot of states of mind that you can be in that will take you out of. Uh, the bullshit that we're experiencing and uh, take you into other realms, okay? 
into realms of uh, exploration of uh, natural things and uh, peoples and that type of thing. Anyway, I think I'm just going to leave it there today. Uh, that's all. Adios.